It means talk and topics. And if I keep going missing because of my horrible internet connection today, I would like to apologize now itself, which I think is happening currently while I'm talking right now. So uh, at any point, if I go missing, bro, just comment in the chat box. Like we can we can talk, have some form of communication through there. Um, so today's topic is very because I think it's a topic that is relevant for youngsters. Um, taking the first step in managing finances. Uh, it is some, uh, I think a lot of us have not really taken our first step yet in terms of managing our finances or some of us are now beginning to manage it and we realize this is so tough to do. There's so many challenges, there's so many confusions, you don't understand half of what's going on and that is what a lot of people go through when they first start managing their finances. So that is exactly what we are going to be talking about today in Money Matters and we're going to have two amazing speakers who are quite experienced going through this confusion phase, uh, going through this phase of trying to understand what money is all about, trying to understand what are their habit patterns and then encountering obstacles after obstacles on managing this and then they eventually triumph and come out of it stronger. So we're going to have two amazing youngsters who will be sharing their experience on, on uh, experiences on this. But if you're someone who's new to Money Matters, please let us know in the comments, you know, drop a hello, say hi to me. I will actually be showing your hellos in the, uh, in the screen. So do say hi to the speakers as well as me. I can see Yashika, Ahash, Rishalia, Jali Latu. I hope I'm saying your name right. Noreen, Madeline, Sanat, <laughs> Dila. So there's a lot of people here who are watching. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Money Matters is a show that happens on a weekly basis on Sundays where we kind of discuss with a lot of different speakers on how they manage their finances. So it's not just about taking the first step. We have spoken about tax, we have spoken about investment, we have spoken about um, insurance. There's all kinds of topics that we have talked about. Even the basic topics like budgeting and savings, we also talk about those topics. So we hope that by coming to Money Matters, you get a bit, little bit of dose of wisdom when it comes to money on a weekly basis. You know, Siket Siket Jari Bukit, if Malaysians will understand what I'm trying to say. So you kind of get those doses of wisdom and you apply it in your life and hopefully it kind of brings in a good change with regards to your financial health. That is what I personally am striving for. You can actually follow us on our social media so that you kind of get updated on all the events that we are doing, especially the upcoming Money Matters episodes. You can follow me on The Real Madura. You can also follow Ascendance and Simply Empowering who kind of power this show. So thank you so much to Ascendance and Simply Empowering for kind of supporting uh, the Money Matters show and making sure people out there improve, improve their financial literacy. And I really, really appreciate the support and help. So before we go into it just a disclaimer this is not an investment advice uh, we're not offering anything if you would like to really start developing your finances and you need help to make it happen please do contact people who are experts in this of course you can contact me and simply empowering if you're interested in that but there are plenty of other people out there who do guide individuals on their finances so please do approach an expert to guide you through this so that you kind of make the wise decisions and don't make some mistakes in that in that way all right so without further ado like i mentioned our speakers today are youngsters we have the coo and co-founder of ascendant sanak kumar ganesan who i think started his journey with regards to handling money as young as 14 15 years old and i'm sure even younger than that he already had some experiences with money and then we have nyonya caroline our life's founder caroline joy who's going to be sharing as a young adult what are the experiences she went through with regards to money so without further ado let me welcome on screen our amazing speakers hey guys hi Apakabar. how are you guys feeling today Good, 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 very amazing. It's very nice to be in the Money Matters show. I gotta say, I'm a big fan of the show and a big fan of what the work that Madhura has been doing as well. So it's very nice to be here on the show. 
Yes, yes, little, little, me too. I loving all the questions that are coming in from the forms and stuff, actually. Thank you guys for sending in questions and we are looking forward to answer all the questions. Yes, I think I just have one favor to ask all of our viewers today, guys. Take this link and share it with your friends. Ask one friend to come and watch. That's all you have to do. Because by sharing this, you kind of inspire and empower them in a way. And you never know who needs this topic right now. So just share it with your friends and family so that somebody who needs this gets the link and they can benefit by watching it. All right. So Sanat and Carol, we're going to get into the topic. I think since it's all about getting started in managing finances and all, I only have one question. Why did you get started on managing finances? Like, why was it even a thing? A lot of people go through, like, until they're 40 years old, they realize they don't need to manage finances. Only at 40, they have this realization. You guys have it quite young. So why did you choose to manage your, take the first step in managing your finances? Who wants to go first? That I, all like, so much that I feel like... Caroline well, needs to go first. The suspense is killing me, Caroline. So yes. <laughs> well, the thing is, lucky I wasn't 40 to start with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, okay, I, I am a very late bloomer. I would I consider myself a very late bloomer when it comes to being wise and being a bit more aware about finance and the importance of it. So why I first started to be more serious about it is because of um, I lost a huge amount of income during the pandemic itself. I'm a, I'm a working adult. But during the pandemic, I, it, was, it hits me very strongly and I got so panicked and uh, it, is, it scares me. La. Then only I started, you know, Sudan uh, Jatuh Tangga, and then you start looking at what actually the things that you can actually be done. Uh, can I get help? How do I do, how do I take uh, finance more seriously? Things like that. So that is where I started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people only start taking their finances seriously when there is a big crisis that happens. And uh, it is kind of sad that they wait till then to go on about it. So I hope the viewers who are watching today, you don't wait for your big crisis to get started. The earlier you get started, the better it is. So Sanat, as somebody who did start early, did you also have a big crisis or is it a bit different? Why did you get started? I wouldn't say big crisis. I'd say more like uh, interesting scenario. So um, one of the things that happened was I wasn't really the best when it came to managing my money. I used to... I started earning money when I was about 13, 14. I used to teach classes. My, my parents were tuition teachers and I used to teach classes uh, where yeah. in my spare time and so on as well. It's for a very small amount and so on. And um, after that, when we started assonance and so on, I started earning a little bit more as well. So I was earning money, but I didn't really see the point of like managing it properly and keeping aside things and looking into my finances and all until I started living on my own. And I think a lot of adult, a lot of young adults, the moment they 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 go to college or they they uh, start to they start to take care of their own expenses. I think that's where you actually like for me more like after I finished school, after I finished my form five, uh, that's when the expenses really started to increase because now you must you like you need to take care of your LRT money, you take care of your grab. In the beginning, it was all these things. So you take care of your LRT, your grab, your yep. going and coming back, your food and all these things. And then you realize, oh my god, it's so expensive to like live in your life. <laughs> yeah, in that sense. And um, eventually after that, I, I I had a car. I had a very uh, like a twenty year old Proton Saga at that time and the car comes with its own set of expenses that you will never foresee uh, happening and so on as well. So I think growing up uh, and living on my own were a few of the reasons why I had to start taking finances a bit more seriously and um, with some help with people like Madhura and so on, uh, I think I'm doing a little bit better compared to Paula. Yeah. I, I, I have a, I think maybe we can do this like a rapid fire, but I'm, I'm personally quite curious, right? Because one of the things I noticed is a lot of us have problems with finances at the beginning stages a lot is because you have never been exposed to what the real world is like. Uh, when you're a student, you go to school, especially in Malaysia, you go to school, you have a canteen food. The canteen food is discounted to no, like, no, it's, it's like 50% discount and it's subsidized food kind of thing, you know. So we kind of think like, oh, this is what world is. And then you eventually go on to college and then actual work and all of that. Then you realize, oh my God, it's so expensive to live. So uh, I'm just going to go like three things that you had to pay for when you adult, like became an adult or like when you started to pay for your own expenses, three things that you had to pay for that shocked you. You're like, I have to pay for this or like, you mean it's this expensive? What were the three things that shocked you? Carol, any, any, anything that comes to your mind? Uh, she thinks living is expensive. <laughs> Three 
Ah, uh, three specific expenses. Maybe you can tell me three specific expenses because some of us go like living expensive. But we actually don't know what does that mean. So maybe we can give our audiences a bit of you know wake up call. Ba- basically, a place to stay, rental, and then food and having a car is expensive too. <laughs> I have I have one more thing that shocked me so much these last few months, medical. <laughs> it's very, <laughs> and I didn't realize this. Like you know, when when I was a kid, and I used to get sick, and then your parents bring you to clinic or something like that. You just never know. But then you go clinic, like normal general clinic, and it costs you like almost hundred plus ringgit or something like that. Or if you go for like a checkup or something, it costs you a lot in that sense. So that's one of the things that really shocked me. And other than that, of course, like car is another thing. Uh, it comes with its own own set of expenses. Uh, and. Food in general, every during pandemic, after ordering online, then you realize, oh my god, this how much I actually spend on food. <laughs> yes, I think food is something a lot of us don't realize that it comes to a lot, especially if you're eating out. So last time I used to, you know, we go to restaurants and then I'd be like, I want to have this dish, I want to have this dessert, and then I want to have this really expensive drink, and my mom would be like. Can you like choose something a bit <laughs> not too expensive? I used to be like, why my mom is so stingy when it comes to food and all. <laughs> I used to stick like that. Then until I started paying for it, I was like, then I will go around telling people, can you try not to order the drink? We can get this drink cheaper in another place. <laughs> like, then, oh my god, I've become that person. So uh, food is definitely one of it, and I agree. Medical medical bills. Ah, uh, there's one time I went. To a hospital, and I actually saw a bill with a five-figure medical bill. Five-figure, it's like let's say five zero 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 five-figure lah, basically. And I was like, what? I had to sit down, take ten deep breaths, calm myself <laughs> down, and then go through it. So it's like all these things actually shock us uh, when we encounter it first. But I'm curious, right? Um, did 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 the not so good financial habit like? Start for you guys at a very young age. What was it like at a young age? Because there are some people I know who are so good at saving. I'm I'm envious of their saving habits. So like, what was your childhood like when it came to finances, and how did that influence your that moment when you start trying to take the first step in managing it? No. Can I not go first? Okay, I go first. Maybe I'll shed some light of taking the phrase "walk by faith and not by sight." <laughs> in a very, I took it in a very wrong way. <laughs> like, uh, I don't have the habit of saving money. I mean, uh, okay. money wasn't discussed in my family actually. It's not because we are rich or what. It's just, it's just like it's something very sensitive. I guess no one talks about it. No one talks about you need to have a bank account. What is bank is for? <laughs> and uh, no one talks about savings. No one talks about budgets. So in at my very young life, I don't. Think about, uh, you know, you have this kind. Of, that's a that's a finance management thing. There's something that you need to learn. I need to create a habit out of it. So basically, I know money grow on three. Money will always come. So <laughs> as I grew up, that is how my habit is. Uh, whatever that I get, I will use up everything. No matter how much you give me, and this just is whether it's just enough or it's just. Yeah, basically it's just enough lah. That's all. There's no savings. There's nothing. One. Uh, I know. Where, oh, my money almost finished. Dear, right? Okay, the money will come next month into my account because I'm working. Things like that. So when I don't yeah. have, uh, when I don't have that consistent, um, what is it called income that's coming in because of the pandemic. That's where it, it hits me. And again, because of my childhood, uh, way or how I take things, <laughs> walk by faith and not by sight in a very wrong way. <laughs> So that's why my habit of uh, finance and my awareness about savings, about uh, having a budget, is not there, lah. What's the second question, lah? <laughs> I, I, I maybe we can listen to Sanat first. Like, how was it? I think it's both uh, a good mixture of both. Uh, but a lot of my spending habits are uh, a bit different. So, I grew up where. I grew up in a very generous household, I would say. Uh, in, in terms like like whenever I go like whenever my 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 parents place, so we uh, my parents place, my parents, my grandparents they all live together. And, um, whenever they go and buy stuff, they are buying for ten people, you know, because the house has yeah. like ten twelve people. So I, when I go and see them buying groceries and all, they will buy for like six hundred, seven hundred ringgit per week. You know? 
So and that's how it is. And because of that, like whenever I go to a shop to buy stuff, I'll just take and put whatever because it usually it comes up to a lot and it's not really a thing for me. But I, I didn't calculate the fact that I'm only 1% <laughs> and not like 10 people living in a house in that sense. So my spending habit in the beginning when I started living on my own and all was a lot about um, getting out of that, you know, like, like don't take everything and spend one shot and so on as well. Uh, that's that's on one part of it. And like in school and all, I used to spend a lot. Like whatever money I had, I would spend. I have this thing where I cannot look at my bank account and if there's like a lot of money in the bank account, my mind will be like, oh, okay, there's a lot of money in the bank account. How can we finish this money immediately? And then with the moment there's no more money, I'm like, oh my God, there's no more money already and all. So, you know, um, that's, that's how it was. Even, even in school, like if I had five ringgit, I will spend five ringgit one. If I had like yeah. 10 ringgit, I'll spend that. I don't know how, like if I only have 2 ringgit, I can eat for 2 ringgit and that's it. But if I have 20 ringgit, I can eat for 20 ringgit and that's it. It's the same exact thing. It's not like I'm actually hungry. I just buy more. What is that? Um, like luxurious stuff and all uh, at that time. Right? And I came from a very urban school where like around the school, there were like malls and Starbucks and all these kind of things and all. So one part of it is also well, like when you go out with your friends, something like that, you want to do muka a bit. So you go and buy all these kind of stuff and all. Uh, but 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 my mom is a bit different. Uh, my mom is the person who, she'll tell me this thing. She, she'll, she'll, she'll tell me something like this one, you know. Um, she'll tell me something like, you don't know how much, you don't know how many places there is money stored. And it's like a maze, you know. What she's trying to say is like she will store money in different, different places, man. And she'll never think about it at all. And this is something that I, I didn't really develop, but my sister developed it a lot. I think she has that that habit a bit more compared to me in that sense, lah. Uh, so yeah, I think that's that's a little bit about my childhood uh, experience. Of yeah. Money. I think one of the reasons that I actually love discussing this question with all of my speakers is many of us don't realize that one of the first things you have to do with regards to managing your finances is to look into your childhood because many times we have habits we have beliefs we have uh, a certain lifestyle and all of that it is influenced heavily by our childhood and yeah. uh, childhood also includes like your teenager years and all that as long as you are with your parents whatever that happened during those years uh, we actually kind of replicate it in our later life as well as adults we do replicate it a lot and that is the first thing you have to do you need to understand where you come from and the weaknesses the strengths we have so that we can kind of start managing it and i think you guys both of you actually took time to reflect on this with guidance uh, by your mentors and all that but you took the effort to understand what was your programming like what is your childhood like and that's why now you can actually take the effort to kind of manage it a bit more better uh and and avoid the mistakes uh our parents made or like just even we made at the beginning stages of our adulthood in a way so I, I, that is what kind of i wanted to highlight but like taking that first step right like deciding you know what i i think my finances is not in a good situation i want to do something about it after you decided what did you do nothing <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest and tell you nothing. There's so many times where I'll go like, I must take care of my finances from tomorrow onwards. I will track all my expenses. I'll do everything. And you just won't do it. <laughs> You'll yeah. just like, 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 you know, go on and on and on. And until, uh, for some people, like, they will take that conscious effort to get it done. Uh, yeah. But for me, like, I had certain experiences that actually thought, like, like did, did all, uh, Made me realize I need to start taking it a bit more seriously. Now. So I can share with you guys really funny stories. The most funniest thing that ever happened to me. One of the most funniest things. So I was driving uh, somewhere and I was stuck in the middle of the city, you know. Uh, and I don't know how to go back. The thing is, the problem with me is I didn't pay my phone bill. Okay. <laughs> and I didn't pay, it, not because I didn't have the money. Because I just procrastinate on paying the bill. I was like, you know what, I'll just pay it later. I'll just pay it later. No need to pay la, this, la, that, la, and everything like that. And num, num, almost two months, I didn't pay the, the, the wow. phone bill. So because two months, you didn't pay the phone bill. You know, num, when I'm stranded there, I get a text message saying, your internet has been terminated. Please pay your phone bill to get the internet back. And I'm stuck and I cannot use ways to come back. So I had to park my car somewhere and think about possible solutions of what can be done. So I walked over to this mama shop somewhere there to for the free Wi-Fi. And I went and sat there and I like, you know, went on ways and I just took picture of screenshot of the roads that I need to go to. And I had to look at that and drive. If I 
if I miss a single turn at that time, I will have to like go and find another mama shop. <laughs> Yeah, this kind of things like that made me realize that son, stop being dumb. Just go and feed the thing. You know? <laughs> feed the thing for the month so you don't have to worry about things like this. So yeah, you know, you make this kind of uh, of uh, <laughs> no, he does like, what you know, you make this kind of mistakes only then you realize okay, okay, maybe I should take my finances more seriously. And after that, I started uh, doing a bit better in that sense. Well. Yep. Why didn't you use the Wi-Fi to pay the phone bill? Good question. <laughs> yeah. I did. I did. I did. I did pay the phone bill on that day. <laughs> But the thing is, it'll take you two days for it to come back. <laughs> like, <that's how> <laughs> yeah, they're not going to immediately, oh, you have paid your bill immediately now. It takes time. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a very, very interesting one. A, a lot of us actually don't take the first step. Like, that not, after we have decided, we, it just nothing happens. Caroline, did you go through that same kind of scenario? But yours is an extreme uh, situation where you, you because you lost your income, that's when you got the realization. So I don't think you can just sit down and do nothing, right? Did you? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> I, I, I sit down and start. Uh, what is it called? Uh, for me, I guess, like like you say, it's because of the extreme or how things are happening at that time. I know if I don't do anything, <laughs> I'll be in a huge hole and a bigger trouble. So I think the first thing that I did is went on to consult somebody who really knows how to how to do this thing and teach me how to do it. But in between, in between that, how that person guiding me how to do it and stuff like that um i had a lot of emotional up downs <laughs> like managing my own emotion first comes first if not yep. even if the uh, guys this person that's managing my finance very well is actually madura i thank you so much too for doing this also <laughs> and, uh, yeah and um what's it called and when i was uh, every time I'll, I'll go back and bug madura many many times <laughs> and say, Madura, I don't have money. <laughs> Madura will come tell me, come sit down with me, show me the spreadsheet, <laughs> show me what's the plan and things like that. And that calms me down because my senses is able to see. I'm actually okay. It's just that because I'm freaking out and I cannot manage my emotion well enough, therefore, I'm not able to come down and actually do my work and do what's supposed to be done. I guess yeah. the first step is I get someone to someone to really see what's going on in my finance thing, which I never even take notice for the past years itself. Even mm-hmm. my mentor told me many times until something slapped you, then you take things seriously. Anyway, <laughs> and, then, uh, and also uh, at that moment, learn to manage your emotion. I wouldn't say it's easy, but with enough enough support, it's okay. It's manageable to do it. I think I, I like that the two things you guys brought up where uh, Sanat's one is more on procrastination, which is what a lot of people get stopped at. They procrastinate and that is why they never manage finances. And next thing you know, years have passed and uh, you have not done anything. And then Caroline brought a very, very point of emotions. Like if you can manage your emotions, then you can move on to the other things. Because most of the time, all of us kind of know the general gist of what needs to be done to manage finances save some money put it in and invest and you know don't spend more than what you and we know this stuff our parents have told us this hundreds of times when we were kids and the school has taught us i think there's some uh, old grandparents great grandparents who have also told this as advice we know this stuff but we fail because of procrastination and emotions uh, so i like that you guys brought up those points so when you did start to like you know take action with uh, with regards to after handling your procrastination and your emotion, um, what were the few habits that you started developing? What are the first few habits that somebody should focus on building uh, to kind of like bring their finances under control? I think for me, it was more of like, there's some, uh, Joyce just told me this, uh, out of sight, out of mind, you know, like like if you, if you put aside something, literally anything, like even if it's two ringgit and you put it somewhere, it's out of your mind which means you just don't realize that it's there. So yep. it took me a really, really long time to do this. But I, there used to be a time where um, even during the beginning of the pandemic or so, I was earning about half of what I was earning at the time. But even then I was telling myself, just put aside like 20 ringgit. So like in my in, in money market or something, I used to put like 15 ringgit or 10 ringgit just for the sake of putting it. Because I know that if I don't build the habit of putting aside something, then I will never build the habit on all one. So nowadays what I do is every beginning of the month or towards the end of the month when I get certain income, I'll make sure I just put it there and put it somewhere where I will not use. And it's not a big amount of money, it's just a small amount of money. So yeah. that it will slowly start growing, growing, growing. And more than it growing, you will build that heavy pattern of putting aside something first. 
and don't don't use it don't touch it no matter what happens and that's the the hard part for me the, one of the first things i had to build up mm. for me it's more like getting to know yourself <laughs> It's like, for example, okay, I started off with uh, tracking, tracking my expenses, my income and things like that. So as I was tracking my expenses, I have, we have like, certain budgets and things like that. And along the way, I found out I'm a, I'm a, I'm a really foodie. I love to eat, that's one thing. And I love to eat expensive stuff. <laughs> I mean, things that really, really like, you know, tasty, indulgent, stuff like that. So at one point, I realized I got very upset because I can't eat what I want to eat. <laughs> And just because of that, I couldn't focus on my work at all. Because all the time I'd be thinking I have no enough money to eat what I want to eat. I'm so upset because I, <laughs> I want to eat this. I want to eat this food. I want to eat this crap. I want to eat that one and stuff like that. My focus is totally on, Yo, I want to eat, I want to eat, I want to eat. <laughs> so, and when I started, uh, what is it called? Uh, realizing this is actually a very strong programming in me. If I don't eat, I become a hug. Like <laughs> literally turn angry. <laughs> <laughs> then and then, oh, actually, it, it, this for my a lot of my budget actually went on to food. A huge amount of my budget actually went on to food because that is what keeps me grounded. That's what keeps me stable, and you know my emotion can I can manage because I got food. <laughs> yep. So, so yeah. <laughs> I, I think uh, Caroline's one is something that many of us have to go through. Especially, uh, one of the things I always tell the people I work with is this, right? The the If you want to do budgeting and all that, it, you need to have a really good understanding of yourself, things is value to you. And a lot of us think budget will stop us from living the life we want to live. But what they don't, what a lot of people fail to understand is budget is supposed to help you live the life you want to live. So if you tell, if you think food is important to you, then you should allocate more for food. But there will be other things that actually don't matter to you so much. So you need to take that conscious effort to reduce the funds that go to those areas. So I like what Carol says. Uh, this is one of the first few things that most of us need to address when it comes to managing our finances and all of that. So I think a lot of people are relating to <laughs> <laughs> Agreed, Carol. The first thing where you cannot eat what you want to eat is terrible. <laughs> same, Caroline. Same. Wow. You guys are so deprived of food, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Why are we? The other thing I realized is some food I can cook myself and eat. So it's like, you know, the, the food you like to eat, technically, if you cook it yourself, there's a high chance you will save 50% of what you pay for it. So if you, I mean, if you're into cooking, well, you can take that food to do it. If you're not into cooking, then just forget that idea. Food is everything. Wow. Mm. Okay, guys, calm down. Food is one food. aspect of your life. Calm down. Oh, food God. <laughs> okay, audience is losing it. It's okay. <laughs> any, any other things that you feel we should be working on when we first start taking the steps in finances? Any other habits we should be building? I love Sanat's one of savings because that's the one that took me forever but the moment you get it right you make a lot of progress in finances but other than savings Sana, is there any other things you need to look at paying your bills <laughs> <laughs> not an experience like like paying your bills in the beginning of the month actually helps you a lot so that you don't uh, like you already allocate the money already you know it's there already like it's done there. yeah so you don't have to worry about you can manage whatever you have the the thing that happens to me is i will procrastinate on these kind of things and towards the end of the month, I've already used up the money that I have. So now I don't have money to pay the bill that I could have paid if I had just paid it in the beginning of the month when the income was, was coming in that sense. So I feel like that's something that, that I need to learn also. I, I do I do have one or two months sometimes where I, I miss it out or so on. But um, taking the effort to just like pay off whatever you need to pay off first, uh, that, that does help a lot. And a lot of us think that we cannot survive with less with, with, with lesser money than we usually have. I feel like it's something that I've been learning a, a bit more this, this last few months or so, that the amount that you think you need and the amount that you actually need, there's a difference uh, in it. For, for some people, it's more like like uh, a lot of times like you, you think you can save this much money, but you need more. But there's yep. also times when you become, when you're good at, when you become slightly better at managing it, you actually realize that you don't need to spend as much as you actually spend on something. Uh, yep. For example, like, I, I told myself like things like online shopping and all, it's very rare that I'll go and do it because I know that, do I really need it or not? Like, like, like uh, can I survive without 
it for the next two or three months or should I save up for it or something like that? It's this kind of question that I slowly start asking myself. Let me realize that sometimes you don't need as much money as you think you need. Uh, like your mind will say, I need this, this amount must be in my bank the whole time. Then I'll be okay one, everything like that. But I guess I guess it's it's a process. La. Like you learn how to manage it a bit better. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not very good at it. There's some things that I will still like out of pure temptation will just go and get it. Uh, but, 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 you know, you manage it. La. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I want to add on one more thing, like um, when managing finance, uh, one thing is yes, like life expenses being this is very important to be responsible to for your own uh, life itself. Another thing is actually being able to settle some loans. I, uh, well, I have students' loans, I have car loans, I have hutang keliling pinggang. So <laughs> at that time, I the, 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 the thoughts was, the mindset was, I will pay when I have the money. But throughout the years, even before the pandemic, I have the money. I still don't pay it <laughs> until you really make the decision and with some guidance itself, you really start settling the loans, the loans and the debts that you have. The lighter I felt, a bit lighter, lighter, lighter. Like wow, this is such a relief, man. I didn't know that this is possible. Actually, you can live life, you can pay loans at the same time, and actually feel very satisfied with your own life. It's like it's like homework. Like, it's like homework, you know. It's like we all will do that thing where we will never do the homework at all until the last possible moment of doing the homework. But like, like one thing that changed for me when I was in school is I realized that, oh my God, I have so much free time in school that I don't have to do my homework at home. I just do everything yeah. in school. I actually save up on a lot of time, which is the, the biggest realization that happened to me, which no student, a lot of students don't realize this. Is. If you actually finish up your work in school, you have time at home. Nobody does this. But it's the same thing that we carry forward to with regards to money. So we will always want to pay the last possible second and that will cause all of the unnecessary headache and, and, and yes. emotions and this and that. But when you realize that, oh my God, okay, I could have just done it. And, and sometimes you can't see it. Like one of the things that is helping me out is think Madhura is also helping me see like, okay, where am I missing? Or what do I need to take note of and so on? If somebody else is there to point it out, um, not just in terms of like, personal finance, but also like I run excellence as well. So even in terms of business finance, there's somebody there to point it out and, and tell, foresee that the expenses are coming here or you're doing this later, or you're doing that, later. getting that help and asking for the help, first of all, I think that, that, that makes a lot of difference now. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Uh, uh, I think paying loans and paying what is due, like the bills and all of that, is something people tend to procrastinate on. It, it feels unfair and all those kind of stuff. But actually, when you do it, and just get it done with, pay what is due to others. I think when it comes back to you, what is due to you will come back without any stoppages. If not, if you hold it back, it's going to definitely hold, be held back from you as well. Which I think yeah. is very, very, very important. Yeah, there's this phrase. There's this phrase that I really remember. It is actually uh, by Joyce itself. She says something. Um, it's not yours to keep. The money that comes to you is actually not yours to keep. It hits me hard. I'm like, oh really? Oh yes. It's actually not your mind, not mine to keep because there are bills to settle. There are all these things to settle. So why are you keeping the thing? Go and settle all the things that you need to settle. Then you can then the then uh what is called once you're light and your emotions is okay you're happy you will attract more to come in and get to do the goal that you want we have a goal that you like you focus on that so yep. that's something that's very unique to look at yeah one of the I mean this is going I'm I'm talking now but I'm okay one of the books that I've been currently reading is this book called Richest Man in Babylon 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 so it was so interesting. First of all, you you should listen to the audiobook. I think if you read the book, you'll probably fall asleep because it's the really old English with thou and thee and all the stuff that you probably won't understand how it works. So I'm listening to the audiobook and they talk about one of the things with regards to finances, the ones who are listening here, right? The, the, the things that Sanad and Caroline are sharing with us today, this will apply for years to come. That book was written, I think, like 1920s or even earlier than that. Until now, those values are valid those principles still apply to current life. So the rules and principles with regards to money, if you can practice it now, it will apply in any stage of your life because it, it, it it's kind of the same thing. It's just the amount increases or changes and the purposes change and all that. So I hope those who are watching keep this in mind because you never know how this is actually going to be benefiting you in different, different areas. You may think like, I don't owe anyone money. 
you may be a kid but you may have borrowed some money from your friend to eat lunch that day so you can always pay those money back so when you have this habit right when you have bills and you have loans you will pay it back correctly why sir the the amount of unpaid money <laughs> to people especially in school <laughs> this day like bro you must have debt it just it just never comes back yeah okay up uh, you guys can hear me right yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. okay so my question that i would like to take uh with regards to the speak uh, the, one of the audience questions that we have asked uh is teenagers tend to get blinded by fashion and end up spending hundreds of ringgit just to shop for trendy clothing what can we do to prevent this wow that is a very tough question to ask okay i have to make some it's like confession time for me so recently uh, what is that i used to think that it's not necessarily to buy like really nice clothes just buy la whatever cheap la clothes or whatever you can buy just buy it for me until people start telling me what oh, you dressing up like this morning it's no sense at all in that sense but more than that i feel like it really depends on like why you need it and and whether it makes you feel good about yourself or not uh, i think that's the the main thing like for me i need there's two types of things like uh, work related clothes and all like wearing some nice shirts to go for meetings and all these kind of things i i will generally spend more on that because it's related to the stuff that i i do in that sense otherwise my normal day to day clothes is just the most normal thing but every once in a while you will feel like you want to get like certain kind of clothes that just make you look nice in general when you go out or when you go out and, and meet your friends or something like that and it's okay to 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 spend on that um i will ask for me i don't know what other how to handle it but for me what i tell myself is like Will I use this or not? Or is it just going to be a, a a baju that I will wear for one day and I'll never wear it again? So it's going to be like that. Might as well I don't, you know, like get it in that sense. And I'll I'll, but it doesn't mean you cannot get something trendy. Like if you really like if you're going to use it in your day to day basis and you're going to go out and do things, and all, then yes, definitely. But if you're not going to use it, it's going to sit in your cupboard the whole time. then maybe you should reconsider it. like like you buy like those expensive sweaters and all and you will never use it because it's just so hot outside <laughs> so but, but if it's nice and it also is functional then 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 get it in a sense so that's what i tell myself uh, like don't tell yourself you cannot get nice clothes but get nice clothes that you will actually wear <laughs> that's the thing that I, I, i think sanad and i we actually went once to this is an essence outing we were mm. at new central and then we all decided to buy this leather jacket matching leather jacket <laughs> <laughs> i think we all spent about 100 bucks plus on that leather jacket and for us it was quite expensive at the point we were like oh my god the money's got literally paid the moment we paid it we were like why did we do this to why ourselves <laughs> literally when we were walking out we were like that is the stupidest thing we have ever done but that that jacket i think all of us wore it to an extent where it started falling to pieces that's how much we utilize the resource so like what sanjay says like we use it to that level of like really take take care of the thing and really use it then it's fine but like what's what sanjay say if you're going to wear it once and never touch it again then don't waste your money on those kind of things or somebody is i think rm 200 thank you ira for letting us yeah. <laughs> well, 200 is most sense It was the day my FPM finished, <laughs> and we decided that we should buy some. Uh, my 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 list of things to do after SPM was buy something. I don't know what to buy, but buy something. And we all ended up buying leather jackets. <laughs> yeah, so it's all <laughs> Carol, do you do you face this kind of thing? It doesn't have to be clothes. I think this is something we all face in a lot of different areas. You mean that like, uh, getting too excited and start buying stuff? <laughs> this one is more of a recent question. Uh, I yeah. would like to share about the clothes one first, which is okay. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. The clothes one, okay. I about five to six years ago, I adopt this thing called minimalism. So minimalism mainly you only have like twenty clothes in your in your closet and stuff like that. So it just lasted about a year like that. Then after that, I I did stop buying clothes. I don't buy clothes because that's not my priority. But I love fashion. I I do uh, look out for how I look and how I dress up and stuff like that. But what happened was I adopt people's clothes where people give away. 
it just naturally you just keep attracting stuff like this and i have a lot of clothes you know and from there on that i found there's too many clothes in my in my closet that i don't wear because you know sometimes i went to a public university so you can't wear shorts there you can't wear things that is above your knee you must wear everything below your knee then you can go to class you know there's certain dress codes to it so um i can only wear very selected few so what i did was i actually get it makes me very creative until today i still apply the creativity sometimes you see my clothes right i will cut and then i will do something about it i will mix and mix and match the clothes and people won't know it's actually the same clothes because i guess if you if there's a will you really love fashion and you know fashion is like something that you spend hundreds on and it's so trendy and after sometimes you just throw it away why not make it into something um worth your creativity just mix and match in different things people won't know people will always think you are actually having different other kinds of clothes but actually no it's actually just enhance that creativity ability and how you do things differently and it that's what i'm doing lah for myself <laughs> so um, yeah <laughs> thank you and <laughs> uh, until today i don't buy clothes anyway um and uh, grateful because I, i can have a lot of clothes people don't need to me and yeah, <laughs> uh the the one more side that you talking guys are talking about after uh sunday graduate graduating and you must buy something right and so it's like buy 200 ringgit jacket <laughs> as recently things like this happen i just uh shifted to a very new place it's a very beautiful place and i got so excited i started buying uh, the few things i needed is like rice cooker and stuff where i really need it so i have a list of things that i need to buy so i don't overspend but along the way <laughs> you will see this is nice it is i can put this bawang thing i can put this thing i'm very i'm a, i'm a little bit more i love hypermarket a lot <laughs> and i love market the, you know that rack you can organize your fruits you can organize your little little groceries i got excited about it so i just put it <laughs> it's not even in my list after that i can't find the things i needed i tell myself you know what i go online and find and online it presents to you so many things you know the algorithm will present to you all this um racks uh cupboard so i got so excited i want to buy everything <laughs> and i just sort of convince my another housemates and tell tell my housemates like you know what you can get this this is good for us and whatever it is my husband just go along and say yes can lucky the good thing is luckily when i was so excited at the moment i just clicked to add in the cart i didn't click buy now after a few days when i look back at the cart i was asking myself do i really need this i do do i really really need the excitement is no more there the the the, the emotion is more settled down already and looking at the things that i really do i really really need this so a lot of like um extra tiffin extra this extra that i i think if i bought the extra tiffin it's going to keep in my cupboard and <laughs> have moles inside there. <laughs> so that's the danger i would say when it comes to uh, to manage finance better i guess is starting from managing my emotions are for me whether it's down or whether it's too high up it's both ways is still dangerous yeah, or yeah. yeah or you numb towards it is also very dangerous yeah. it's like stress like i realized that i will spend so much when i'm stressed I'll buy chocolate, I'll buy ice cream, I'll buy like the, I won't eat the normal meals. I'll buy like the deluxe special meals and everything just to make myself feel better. But the real problem is not that. The problem is something is wrong with my emotions. Something like either I'm stressed or I'm not handling something or I feel bad about something and that's why it's happening. We we don't often look at the reason why it's happening to us, but we will treat the the symptoms it's like like sometimes you know when you you binge watch shows there's a reason why you binge watch show because you're not okay with something that's happening with you and instead of like like facing the 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 problem that is there you will like binge watch show or you're stressed eat or you'll do something like that in that sense so i think one thing that i always like to notice about myself is either when i'm spending too much or when i'm spending too much time doing something what's going on in my head like am i okay or not uh, why am i why am i overspending is it because that's i want to or is it because there's something that's bothering me so if, I, if it's bothering me who do i ask for help do i ask my mentor do i like you know think about what i need to do do i reshuffle my my timing it depends lah but i think managing yourself is the one of the biggest ways uh, you can actually start managing your finances as well. yeah. so 
I, I think that kind of covers some of the basic things. There's no way we can cover all the lessons. And I think both of you have gone through a lot as well with regards to managing your finances. There's a lot more stories we can discuss. So uh, once in a while, I do have these episodes where I bring in the youngsters that I uh, work with on a weekly basis or monthly basis, and they get to share their experiences. Trust me, so many of these is, uh, experiences that I personally didn't go through. Uh, I have my own set of experiences, but everyone has an experience that is worth telling. And that is what we want to highlight in Money Matters. So I think today's gist of it is as much as there's the technical tools to get started, there's also these other things like your emotions, your goals, uh, your decision making, your your childhood, your programming, your beliefs. These things actually play a huge role and you need to kind of start addressing those. Uh, you having another issue and that kind of reflects on your finances like the food thing is so true i didn't realize it as well until i started tracking both my food and my money and i went like that's a pattern when the food <laughs> increases the money. i was like oh my god it makes sense both of it is correlated so if you're like me you'll kind of find this kind of things very interesting so i hope that you guys join us and journey together with us to kind of learn how to manage your finances better join us for our future money matters episodes because every week when you talk about this you may get a new wisdom or something that connects to you and when you start taking action on it uh that's i can assure you you'll start improving on your finances so please do join us for our future money matters episodes uh one way you can make sure that you do not miss one is by subscribing to money matters uh subscribing basically means you i'll send you a reminder on all the different different episodes that we are having so you do not miss one you get the link directly so you don't need to rsvp 10,000 times so just subscribe for money matters the link is in the chat box so that you do not miss a single episode and i think other than that you can also be a part of ascendance ascendance is where all of us met caroline sanet myself it all started growing so much in terms of not just our finances but also other aspects of our lives because of ascendance and uh, if you are interested to be a part of this community which is all about improving ourselves becoming a better individual uh, achieving holistic success then i assure you that you should definitely join ascendance and it's not that expensive all you have to do is pay only rm 150 per year which I think is a very good deal, guys. So please do join Ascendance. If you're wondering where to go, I'm just going to drop the link. It's ascendancepro.com. There's something called Join Ascendance there. Join us and be a part of this community. Because together, I'm sure all of us can make huge amount of changes, not just in ourselves, but in other people as well. All right. Sana and Caroline, any last words to say as we end today's session? Thank you so much, Mother of actually having us on the show and having me on the show as well. I think there's a lot for me to learn in terms of managing my money. And um, it's nice to have shows like this, and it's nice to have people like Madhura and Simply Empowering and a lot of the financial advisors out there who are actually looking into this and so on. And I think for kids, for teenagers, no matter whatever, whatever age you are, um, it's good to get someone to help you do this. Because as much as I think I can do this, I cannot. You know the car story, right? <laughs> you cannot want in that sense. But getting help is the most important thing. So if you're out there and you're a kid or a teenager, um, get help, get someone to help you manage your finances. Yeah, I think ditto to that also. And also another thing, uh, one last thing is also, like, um, I guess in my teenage life and even in right now also, I found it very hard to manage um, finance still. I need a lot of guides from people who really know how to do this because I don't have the habit. Uh, one more thing is also, um, I just realized that I still have uh, this peer pressure thing that's going on in me. <laughs> that uh what is it called that will influence me will influence my expenses and things like that so this is something that i wanted to cook more and i hope and next time we can have uh, more of these kinds of discussion so thank you so much Madura, for having me too peer pressure is a very good topic i shall do that all right all <laughs> right guys that's the end of it thank you so much See you guys at the next episode we have a very exciting topic next week we are having none other than I don't know if you can see it on screen yet because even my screen does not appear yet. We have Edward. You can see, right? Edward Boy, the CEO of New York Synchronizer, is going to be talking about building relationships one brick at a time. Uh, this is going to be happening next week, Sunday. So do subscribe for Money Matters so that you get the link. And we will see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for watching and please do like and subscribe so that you never miss an episode. Uh, do share this episode with your friends and family. And if you like this episode, leave us a review on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash simplyempowering. 
Money Matters is where we aim to provide valuable content to inspire and empower you on your money matters. Thank you once again for watching this episode and see you guys at the next one.